All right, now just bear with me here. Rydberg matter is a lot more of a thought experiment, like uh, Hawking radiation, but in a similar way to Hawking radiation, it does actually exist. It's just really, really weird. I mentioned earlier that when electrons gain energy, they move up to higher energy levels which are further away from the nucleus. A Rydberg atom is an atom with an extremely high energy state. Now, typically they decay almost immediately, releasing a photon, which is why objects release light when they're heated or pass through an electric current. However, the frequency of this stepping down of electric potential decreases with the cube of its energy state. So a Rydberg atom, which has lots of energy or is extremely excited, can theoretically remain stable for a lot longer than an atom that is less excited. And since higher energy electrons orbit further away from the nucleus, a Rydberg atom has a massive size. In fact, the largest Rydberg atom we have ever created in a lab was about 2 microns across at the 200th energy level. That's about the size of a red blood cell for a single atom. Now this is where things get really weird. Because of the very weird shape and size of the Rydberg atom, it interacts with other atoms very differently. And when you chain a bunch of them together in a hexagonal lattice, the forces cancel out just perfectly enough for them to be slightly, slightly attracted to each other forming this kind of weird, extremely unstable, puffy cloud of Rydberg atoms. Now this decays extremely rapidly and it has to be at near perfect, you know, absolute zero, vacuum sealed, zero interference conditions. I'm talking like quantum computing levels of no interference. But it is technically possible and we have observed it in extremely cold, low-density interstellar space. space, 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 space.